David Zaslav be like, on this rock, I will build my DC universe. And I'm okay with it. I really like this one. No spoilers. Look, man, by now, the genre is pretty well known. Big action, big comedy, big visuals, big actors. Lots of slow motion, attempts at heartfelt storytelling, cliches here and there. Sounds like a Marvel movie when they're just pretty good. But Black Adam is a little bit better than those. It won't win any awards, but what I appreciate about it the most is that it remembers to have fun in everything that it's doing. You can tell with every frame that Dwayne Johnson is in that this is a passion project for him. The way he carries himself is more stoic than charismatic, delivering with a deadpan reminiscent of some WWE days, although he noticeably is missing any kind of accent as someone from the fictional Kondok in the Middle East. He's perfect for the role, and just like Black Adam often skirts the line between good and evil, he plays up the anti-hero equation nicely. While I know the character mostly as a villain, it's refreshing to get a movie where they're the focus. It sort of flips the expectations on their head in terms of how the plot flows, even if it's still fairly predictable by the end. I don't mind that when it's executed well, and it mostly is here. There's a shot at the end that mirrors a famous Black Adam panel that gave me goosebumps. Well done on nailing the title character. Another standout is the action, with spectacular visual effects that are mostly consistent, only a few moments where it's like, oh, CGI. Hard hitting superpowers, epic fights, and massive destruction. There's a nice sense of scale and humor used effectively throughout the action. In fact, the humor landed a lot of the time for me with a few moments of actual laughing out loud. Lots of that will be preferential and not every joke lands well, but none of it felt cringe. For example, the catchphrase joke from Thor Love and Thunder that always felt so forced and flat is used much more effectively here with a big payoff at the end with it. And The Rock does really well with that humor. Something else unique is that a huge portion of this film is dedicated to the Justice Society, or the JSA. I was so happy to see them in live action again on the big screen. We had seen them in Smallville and some other projects. Although I do have that thought in the back of my head like, where were they when Doomsday or Steppenwolf attacked? But it's implied they operate more in secret so I don't hold it against the film. They get much more screen time than expected, each one getting their moment to shine and small character moments, some more than others. Adam Smasher is a lovable goofball, Cyclone is a visual marvel with an intriguing backstory, and Hawkman is a cool, tough as nails leader whose backstory is strangely ignored. And I'm not sure why they chose that route because there are several pieces of dialogue where they could have easily explained the Thanagarian reincarnation story that he carries with him, but perhaps they thought it would be too much or too distracting from the main story, but it felt natural for everyone else. If you don't know much about the character, I could see the fact that they don't explain him being a little confusing. And while I wanted that, because I didn't need it, it was okay. The true standout of the team is the always suave, never cheap, Pierce Brosnan as Kent Nelson slash Dr. Fate. I love Brosnan, he's my favorite Bond. There's just a sincerity about him that lends a gravitas to every line he utters. He's the true heart of this film and Dr. Fate looks fantastic. I sadly just wanted more of him, as with all of them. So here's hoping a JSA movie comes after this. There's so much more to explore with this set of characters and this team. This sort of plays into one of my criticisms that Black Adam's movie can feel, at times, a bit overcrowded. Just as a movie about Batman needs to spend ample time with the villains, a villain movie needs to spend ample time with whatever antagonist is here, and that's primarily the heroes or the JSA. Cool, fine. But there's a fallback to this generic, creative for movie human characters that often feels tacked on or uninteresting. I discussed this with a friend who observed the same. We both feel like these human characters are more the protagonists and their motivations are quickly swept aside when other characters show up. Black Adam needed human relationships to ground him to the people of Kondok, so on paper I get it. The execution of it feels like much was left on the cutting room floor, so for two hours of film, there's just too many characters. The mother character, whose name I forget, largely exists to service the plot, and the son exists solely to service Black Adam's development. That's not inherently wrong, but I wish we had gotten to know them and their struggle more so, so we care about them a little bit more, and that's hard to do in less than two hours. You care about what happens to them, but you're not as invested in their journey. A longer cut of this film could flesh this out. I also feel like the performance from the kid actor and his voiceovers and inspiring speech sections weren't as convincing as they should have been. So the performance was a bit weak and they feel like generic characters. And on the film, sometimes feeling rushed or too short, the opening prologue with the voiceover feels like it could have been a whole 30 minute backstory where it's just told and in maybe a better way that keeps the mystery of the twist that comes later. There are several MacGuffins throughout the story and one of them 
is completely forgotten about, even though it's a potential huge weakness for Black Adam. It's weird, but it shifts focus to the other one and leads to a stereotypical CGI villain at the end. This character has some great visual moments and one particularly chilling scene, but Sabak as a character largely is forgettable. I do at least appreciate that his appearance didn't overshadow anything, it's served the character stories and arcs, and it's built up to throughout the entire film, so it doesn't feel out of nowhere for me. There's not much depth there, but there doesn't always need to be for something that's pure evil. Black Adam is the shade of gray, so it's okay to have that other side, the, the full evil side, but I'll say it's predictable and resolves fairly quickly, so I do get the complaint. Really cool to see Intergang. They're a great choice of bad guy fodder for the film. I like the idea of how they're developing their tech and some visuals that go along with it. Could be that they're using Kryptonian technology and in tandem with what's in Kondok. For superpowered characters, they make for unusually fun guys to be disposed of. World building like this and another key scene drop hints at the future without feeling like obvious setup for franchises. It's organic, so that's appreciated. At the same time, they don't forget to remember past movies with small characters popping up as connective tissue for that shared universe feel. It's well done, I like the implications, and it's not distracting. Yet, it all does happen a bit fast. The plot's straightforward, but because of this, the on the nose but worthwhile themes get a lot of time to shine. There is a lot of that typical I'm not a hero dialogue that can be cheesy. What it means in terms of the character is nice. He's not a hero. He never claims to be but he's a protector of sorts with personal motivations that make up a surprisingly engaging portion of the story. An unexpectedly strong family dynamic make everything believable with a semi-decent twist that I was able to figure out solely because of scenes in the trailers, unfortunately. But if you have it, or for general audiences, I think they'll love it. I like how it all ties together. It's not a crazy commentary on the human condition, but it does explore themes of power, responsibility, and the necessity of force. And I mostly dug the concepts of living in Shades of Grey where no hero has ever helped Kondok, so why should they trust the JSA? Why wouldn't they turn to someone like Black Adam for protection and justify his excessive force? Unfortunately, the film's runtime keeps it from exploring these ideas as much as I'd like or that it should, but I'm glad that it's at least touched on. Again, it feels like an abundance of content was left on the cutting room floor to get it down to that two hour movie. I just don't understand why they feel like they have to do that. Yes, pacing is important, but also tell your story. Let it be as long as it needs to be. The two technical things that bothered me were some editing decisions throughout that felt really choppy, almost like they were editing around extended sequences. It's mainly with the scenes involving solely the human characters, and also the sound mixing felt off, with hard to hear and or understandable dialogue with the bass not feeling as punchy as it should. I won't hold this against the film as my local movie theater is known for having issues like this, so it may not be the film. There's other ones I've watched and felt this and then I watch it home and I don't feel it at all. But at least the soundtrack was full of head bobbing rock music and some score work reminiscent of Man of Steel, except maybe a tad more generic. I also don't think I could hum a Black Adam theme walking out, which is a little sad. I like it when you can remember the themes. What made me happy is it all feels very in line with what Zack Snyder started when he was shepherding the universe, like how the first Wonder Woman felt in tandem with the other movies around the time. I'm a huge Snyder fan, so all for it. Please stick around for the mid credit scene. It's one of my favorites in some time and sets up some exciting things to come. Lots of these movies get downgraded by the third act, but here it's the opposite. It actually gets even better with a final fatality that is so cool in execution. Seeing Black Adam wipe the floor with everyone is a power fantasy we've all wanted to see and root for. It's a fun, flawed time at the movies that just might be what shifts the hierarchy of power in the DC universe as The Rock has touted for so long. It's just refreshing to have a villain slash anti-hero focused crowd pleaser that's different from the competition with a lot of the same elements that make it work for people like me. I give Black Adam four out of five stars. Were you a fan of Black Adam? Comment below what you think, like the video, please subscribe for more content coming soon, and remember, always look for the good.